The Bible says that one of the signs of the end times will be people who will mock Bible prophecy. Stay tuned for a shocking presentation by Jan Markell in which she reveals this mockery today. Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy. I'm about to share with you a portion of a shocking presentation by Jan Markell concerning Christian mockery of end time Bible prophecy. Jan is a Messianic Jew who is the founder and spokesperson for Olive Tree Ministries in the Minneapolis, Minnesota area. She has a weekly radio program called Understanding the Times that is carried on over 800 radio stations located all across our nation. Jan's presentation was made at this ministry's 2018 annual Bible conference. The theme of that conference was God's prophetic voices to America. Jan is definitely one of those voices. Here now is Jan Markell speaking about the mockery of Bible prophecy. I have a burden, and I, I talked with the leadership here of Lamb Lion, Dr. Reagan and others, you know, I'm not sure exactly which one that I should be sharing today. And I concluded that I'm going to talk a little bit here about the church, and I'm going to talk about a message that the church has compromised. And Christ died for his church, we know he loves it. It's just probably in years and decades gone by, been a little more, oh, healthy than it is today. So, how did the blessed hope become the blasted hope? And how and why is there such an attack on the greatest message, one third of the Bible, that the king is coming again? How did this happen? To, to, to kind of fully reveal this, I'm gonna to have to name some names today. So some of you may not be fully happy with all the names I name, and I've, it's just in the interest of time, I've cut this down a little bit here. But let's go through it real quickly, and let's kind of consider how did this happen, when did it happen, and who let it happen? How did the greatest news in the Bible become to some last day's madness? From, now, this is, these are Christians speaking calling this last day's madness. Uh, Tom Hughes, he's a pastor at Calvary Chapel, 412 Church in San Jacinto, California, he, uh, wrote an article recently and, and he summed it up brilliantly, why the church rejects Bible prophecy. This, these are his opinions, but I certainly agree with each and every one. And we don't have time to go into, a, into everything, but number one, he feels pastors don't understand it. Perhaps their seminary didn't train them to deal with eschatology. He feels that they fear offending members, they fear offending those attending their church. Um, can you imagine that, that the greatest news that Jesus Christ is coming, uh, perhaps today, could possibly offend someone, but in case, it, in fact, it does. They don't want to scare people, and if we look at some headlines today, they certainly can be a bit foreboding. He feels that they might, the pastors, the church leadership might lose ties if they talk about the end. If you've got a building program going to take 10 years, the Lord's coming back tomorrow. <laughs> Who's going to give to the building program? Well, th th these are Tom's opinions, and I F frankly, uh, I do agree, having ministered in the churches a long time, but, and they might be identified with the loony fringe. You know, I mean, there has been a loony fringe, Harold Camping and others, the date setters, and they don't want to be aligned, and I don't blame them. I don't blame them. So those are just some of the reasons Pastor Tom Hughes wrote in this article that has been picked up and republished just about everywhere. Okay, another reason this message has declined is that there is a decline in dispensationalism. Now, when I was young, 
young, growing up, teenager in my 20s and all. I, I mean, every evangelical church believed in dispensationalism. I mean, the basics that distinguishes between the church and Israel. It uh, believes in the literal rapture, the literal tribulation, the literal antichrist millennium, the literal second coming. So there's a decline in all of this and the belief that the timing of the rapture can be debated. We'll still be friends. It's hard, folks, if you don't believe in pre-trib, but we can still be friends. We can debate and not divide uh, over some of these issues. And then, again, the emphasis on Israel's end time role. The tribulation is for Israel and for the pagan world, for Israel. So these are some of the basics of dispensationalism. And all of this is declining interest in the church in this theology. And I'm, I'm calling just some destructive theologies. And honestly, there's we could write encyclopedia on destructive theologies, but have come in and amillennialism is very old and takes nothing literally. It wouldn't have any favorable impression of, of Israel, Israel's end time role. This kingdom now, dominionism has come on the scene now. And that says that the church, um, if we work hard enough and, and get enough social justice programs, we can make the world perfect. And how's that working out? You know, that's going to take 20 trillion years for the church to make the world perfect. Preterism. How do you possibly believe that all Bible prophecy happened in 70 AD? It's a, we missed it. We missed it. It all happened. It's, it's, it's history. That's what preterists believe. Another destructive theology that's crowding out what I think probably 100% of, of us believe would be replacement theology. The church is the new Israel. And that's just working its way. In, it's even working its way into once extremely solid denominations and churches. Christian Palestinianism, that deserves a message on its own. Some of you might have remembered Yasser Arafat being lowered from a helicopter to the top of the Church of the Nativity in 2004. Uh, the belief of Christian Palestinianism being that Jesus was a Palestinian, he wasn't even Jewish. And so we celebrate the, pa the Palestinian people. There, there's no such thing as a Palestinian, okay? That's another message. Uh, but there isn't. Nonetheless, Christian Palestinian is in them, you know what I'm trying to say, is creeping into our churches and some of them one sound. Okay, so let's look at some attacks on what we believe. Christian today, not Christianity today, Christian today. Why a zombie invasion is more likely than a religious apocalypse. Christian magazine out of the UK. A zombie apocalypse is more likely than the playing out of the Bible prophecy outlined in the Bible, okay? Well, just these are, you might say, well, these are extreme, Jan, I'm sorry they're not. Every year, my conference in the fall gets hung. Jan Markell's End Time Hysteria Conference. This is coming from Christians. Uh, again, last day's madness. Because, again, the message that most of us here love is uh, at best mocked, and at worst, well, people get really ugly. Okay, if you hear this particular article said, for centuries Bible prophecy pundits have predicted the end is near. They appeal to some the same types of signs, wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, famines, false religions. They had one thing in common. They've all been wrong. Well, not so, not so. So I started looking around and I saw that other organizations were raising the same question I'm asking. This is Friends of Israel, a wonderful outfit, uh, pro-Israel pro-Jewish evangelism type ministry to the Jewish people. Whatever happened to the rapture? And probably if I wanted to rename my title, my put a new title on this message, it might be something like this. Whatever happened to the rapture? So others are asking, I was kind of relieved because I didn't want to be the only one out there picking on people even though the most frequent email Olive Tree Ministries gets is where can I find a church that will not marginalize one third of the Bible, eschatology, can you name it, can you name it, you fill in the blank city, would you refer a church? Because they cannot find a church that talks about this glorious good news. 
These people have hurt the cause. Edgar Wisenhunt, 88 reasons why the rapture will be in 1988. He missed it, and then what these folks do, it what makes it even worse, they come out that, well, we missed it by a few, it's gonna be 1989. 89 reasons why it'll be in 1980. This is what they do, and they put, throw egg on the face of all of us, and I go back to that article by Tom Hughes, it's why some don't want to align themselves, pastors and leaders, because they might be identified with a date setter. And again, Harold Camping, Judgment Day, he said May 21st, 2011, didn't happen. And he said, well, I calculated wrong, it's gonna be October 2011. Of course, it didn't happen. So uh, who, can, who can blame a Christian leader for not wanting to be aligned with this? And so I think that these gentlemen have come along in the last 40 years or so and thrown that proverbial cold water on this wonderful, wonderful message. Now, I need to deal with this gentleman for just a minute or two. I'm gonna play a clip as well. Hank Hanegraaff has done enormous damage. Enormous, enormous damage. He's a preterist. He believes all prophecy happened in 70 AD. He cannot stand what you and I all believe. Problem is, he's had a 30-year ministry on radio, and he wrote this book. This was his response to Left Behind. And he thought it's a, a, the Apocalypse Code, it was a, his preterist theology. And by the way, when he finally declared himself a preterist, it took him years to do that. His support went just like this. So the listenership, he's hung on nonetheless. Dr. Thomas Ice reviewed that book. He said the great majority of the book, Apocalypse Code, is a rant against Hannah Graff's distorted view of dispensationalism. I told you it's now in, it's kind of in being attacked. Distorted view of dispensational in general, and Tim LaHaye in particular, and Thomas Ice goes on to say, as he's reviewing this book, there is precious little exegesis, if any, at all, to support his preterist, idealist eschatology. However, there are great quantities of some of the most vicious tirades against Tim LaHaye and many other Bible prophecy teachers that I have ever read in print. Again, the trying to make the blessed hope, the blasted hope. Now let me just play a real short clip of Hank where here again, 30 years of this, and um, at the end of this little clip, he says, you know what? There's no such thing as any chosen people. So now we're getting into, we're not only going to deny, let's say the rapture and all the other things that we believe along with that, even a millennium, etc. cetera, uh, we're gonna come against the Jewish people. What I'm trying to understand is where do they get the teaching that the church will be raptured out and will not have to go through tribulation? Where is that found at? It's not found. That's the whole point. The, the, the point is it's something that is imposed on the Scripture. The notion is a very new notion in church history. It's a 19th century notion that was popularized by John Nelson Darby. And it comes with the presupposition that God has two distinct people. And therefore, he has two distinct plans for the two distinct people. And he has two distinct phases of the second coming and two distinct destinies. This, however, is an imposition on Scripture because the truth of it is God has only always had one chosen people, one covenant community, beautifully connected by the cross and illustrated by a cultivated olive tree. Uh, in, in, in Paul's letter to the Romans. So uh, the point here is that all those who are followers of Jesus Christ are the one chosen people. And this is prior to the cross as well, because all that look forward to Christ prior to the cross are God's covenant chosen people. And the covenant chosen people are made up of people from every tongue and language and nation and people. You're not a son of Abraham uh, because of some genealogical construction. You are a son of Abraham because you believe in the God of Abraham. So the Jews just got disinherited. This goes over the airwaves now for 30 years, and it's done huge damage. Um, 
Mr. Hanegraaff joined the Greek, uh, the Greek Orthodox Church, I believe, one of the Orthodox churches, a year or two ago, and a number of radio outlets, including the entire BOT network, dropped Hank Hanegraaff, and, but the damage had been done. Okay, another name um, I have to name because damage has been done. Uh, Pastor Rick Warren wrote a book some years ago, Purpose Driven Life. I don't have any issues with uh, Purpose Driven Life, but I do have issues with what he's saying on page 285 of that book, where he misquotes Jesus and suggests that Jesus said, the details of my return are none of your business. What is your business is the mission I have given you. Focus on that. Well, obviously, when um, Jesus was troubled by the Pharisees not knowing the signs of his first coming. He wants the church to know the signs of his return. And Pastor Warren went on to say, he said, uh, Rick, he says, those who focus on Bible prophecy are not fit for the kingdom of God. Again, it's done damage. It's done huge damage. It's be, enabled the blessed hope to become the blasted hope. Now, R Pastor Warren, in March of this year, went back on all of this. I think he'd gotten pressure over the years. He said, I'm relenting on this kind of a message. Um, and I don't know his heart, but I'm glad to hear that he's certainly taking another look at it. In, in, in defense of him, he certainly is taking another look at it. Okay, Tim Challies is a popular blogger. Um, reformed theology. He says, there are seven false teachers in the church today. One is the speculator. The speculator obsesses about end times. And somehow his failed predictions dissuade neither him nor his followers. None of you are obsessing about end times. That's the tragedy, is the whole perception is wrong. We're not obsessing, we're rejoicing that God has allowed some of us to be able to have eyes that are perusing headlines and seeing headlines as a harbinger of his return. And that that, again, reminds us of the only hope we have in a hopeless world, and it's getting more hopeless literally every day. Thank God for the one-third of the Bible that um, is hopeful. Now, another attack, and I'm going to spend just a minute on this. I'm going to play another short clip here. Another attack, and I've never seen it so vicious, that's coming against people like myself, J.D. Farag, and others, is the attack on the pre-trib rapture. Um, how this has happened, well, this little clip here will help explain a little bit, but I never thought I would see in my lifetime the kind of, of assault on pre-tribulation theology, which is in the Bible. And to me, it's as clear as can be in the Bible. But those that are attacking and those that are contending against pre-trib are contending contentiously. I'm going to play a clip here of, uh, of Joel Richardson, and he is going to say to pastors, if you're not equipping your flock to meet the Antichrist, that's the worst service you can do to your church members. We'll just play this little clip. To say that the world is in a state of shock this morning would be to understate the situation. Suddenly and without warning, literally thousands, perhaps millions of people just disappeared. What if the end of the world really isn't as so many have portrayed it? What if the church is not raptured to heaven before the great tribulation, as many are teaching? People from all over this claim that we have vanished. What if the church has been left ill-prepared to face the Antichrist and the mark of the beast? What if Tim LaHaye's claim that if the pre-tribulation rapture is false, then the blessed hope will become the blasted hope actually comes true for millions of pre-tribulationists. What if millions who have been led astray by the pre-trib teaching become part of the great falling away that Jesus warned would take place at that time? Left behind or led astray, examining the origins of the secret pre-tribulation rapture features vital end-time insights from prophecy teachers Joe Schimmel, Jacob Prash, and Joel Richardson. The issue of the 
pre-tribulational versus the post-tribulational rapture is one of the premier pastoral issues of our day. If you're a pastor that's not preparing your people to face potentially the Antichrist and the Great Tribulation in this hour, simply because your denomination teaches it or whatever, personally I think you're failing in your role as a shepherd and a pastor. This is a four-hour nonsense film filled with nothing but baloney. It's available online if you ever want to you know, spend a lot of money to watch four hours of this. Um, and I'll stop there. But again, these things do damage. That's all I'm saying. Is the product spread, the message spreads online. John Nelson Darby rolling over in his grave if he knew what people were saying about him, that he started this whole theology. Of course he didn't. He may have popularized it somewhat, but my goodness, they were back in the early church. They were saying Maranatha to one another. They were expecting the Lord's return during the early church. Now here's another voice. I'm going to play another clip here. Now some of you, if you're not in an online person, you won't know who Rick Wiles is, but he's very popular on Online broadcaster. He's a conservative. He's also, as far as I can tell, he's an evangelical. He talks about the Lord a lot. But when you hear what he's saying, again, I'm, all I'm saying is damage is being done by lots of people it, with, in our internet world. A click of a mouse spreads this next message around the world in literally seconds. All right, the, the, the secret preacher of rapture story and Christian Zionism. That's a two-headed monster. Monster. Yeah. It's a two-headed freak monster, okay? They come together. Both of them come together because they were started by the same people. The Christian Zionists started the pre-trib rapture doctrine. And this was, the, was seed planted decades ago, but it came into full fruit That's within right. the last 30 they years. They had to create the pre-trib rapture doctrine to justify Christian Zionism. That's where it all came from. But isn't it interesting that in the recent decades where the American Evangelical Church has been taken over by Christian Zionism, that the American Evangelical Church has lost its flavor. Yes. It's lost its saltiness. It is of no use anymore to God in this country. Right. In fact, things are worse off now than they were 30 years We've ago. We've become a pagan nation. We're Babylon. We're Babylon, and it happened on the watch of the Christian Zionists. I'm laying it on your doorstep, Christian Zionists. You are the cause of America's decline. Those are strong words. They're Rick. strong words, and I mean it. They took control of the churches in America, the Christian Zionists. They changed the gospel. They took Jesus off the cross. They replaced the cross with the Star of David. They took the focus off God and holiness. They put it all on a piece of land in the Middle East. And America has gone to hell. America has gone to hell. We've become a pagan, heathen nation because the Christian Zionists have taken our eyes off Jesus. Well, frankly, I wish Christian Zionists had that kind of influence, but we don't. How many of you remember, well, I know you all remember Francis and Edith Schaefer, wonderful people, a little Brie fellowship they had in Switzerland and, and the wonderful books they wrote, ministry they had. Their son, Frank Schaefer, and he, in the 1970s, he was making 80s, he was making some wonderful movies. Somewhere along the way, he went sideways. And again, he's doing damage. That's all I'm saying. You put all this together, damage is being done, the message that the king is coming is being compromised. This is Frank or Frankie Schaefer on MSNBC. Yeah, you have to understand that the evangelical Christian movement in America latched on to a 19th century concept that was hatched by someone called John Nelson Darby, who said that Jesus could not come back until Israel had been restored as a nation peopled by Jews and Jerusalem was the capital. This is not traditional Christian teaching going back into the ages, even of the Protestant church. You know, this was not a concern of Martin Luther or any Roman Catholic or the Greek Orthodox or anyone else. If you want to update to the present, you know, when I was a kid with my parents in their ministry of Libri, we had a number of Christian leaders come by, um, and one of them had written, Hal Lindsey had written a book called The Late Great Planet Earth, in which he predicted the end times coming in 1980s. He said it's now possible because Israel has been restored. And then others came back and said, no, no, Jesus can't come back yet because Jerusalem's not restored. Fast forward to the 16 books and four films um, that you had that came out of the Left Behind series, written by a friend 
friend of mine, uh, Jerry Jenkins and his um, sidekick co-author uh, that wrote it with him. Um, and you've got 60 million copies sold that essentially are total fiction. I'm going to give you an analogy. This is as if the Twilight Zone had been taken as gospel by some religious group and they were going back through old episodes and basing an entire cultic kind of religion on it. Now you Okay, so now what we believe is cultic. You put all this together and damage has been done. And the glorious message, the good news message has been marginalized, compromised, made fun of. Of course, all of that's fulfilling scripture as well. The rest of this hard-hitting presentation by Jan Markell is available on our 2018 conference video titled, God's Prophetic Voices to America. In just a moment, our announcer will tell you how you can get a copy. As I said at the beginning of the program, the mockery of the Lord's return that we are witnessing today is one of the signs of the times that we indicate that we're living in the season of the Lord's return. I sincerely hope you are ready for the Lord's return. To prepare for that great event, all you need to do is repent of your sins and reach out in faith and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Well, folks, that's our program for this week. I hope it's been a blessing to you, and I hope you will be back with us again next week, the Lord willing. Until then, this is Dave Reagan speaking for Lamb and Lion Ministries saying, Look up, be watchful, for our redemption is drawing near. You can obtain a complete copy of Jan Markell's presentation about the mockery of Bible prophecy, together with five other presentations that were made at our 2018 Bible Conference in this video album that contains three DVD discs. The speakers, in addition to Jan, include Robert Jeffers, pastor of First Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. Billy Crone, pastor of Sunrise Baptist Church in Las Vegas, Nevada, and founder of Get a Life Ministries. Bill Koenig, member of the White House Press Corps and founder of the internet news service called World Watch Daily. Jonathan Kahn, best-selling author and rabbi of a Messianic congregation in Wayne, New Jersey. And Dave Reagan, the founder of Lamb and Lion Ministries and its senior evangelist. The album can be yours for a gift of $25 or more, including the cost of shipping. Just call the number you see on the screen Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time, or place your order through our website at lamblion.com. In her presentation, Jan Markell focused on one of the signs of the end times, namely the mockery of Bible prophecy. If you are interested in the other signs the Bible tells us to look out for, then you need to get a copy of Dr. Reagan's book, Living on Borrowed Time. In it, he provides a sweeping overview of all the end time signs, lumping them together in categories like signs of nature, signs of society, spiritual signs, signs of technology, signs of world politics, and the most important category, the signs of Israel. You can get a copy of this book for a donation of $20 or more, including shipping, by calling the number you see on the screen or placing your order through our website at lamblion.com. Both the video album and the book can be obtained for a gift of $35 or more, including shipping. Just call the number you see on the screen or go to our website at lamblion.com and ask for special offer number 840. Thank you for joining us on today's Christ in Prophecy, a presentation of Lamb and Lion Ministries, a non-denominational ministry dedicated to teaching the fundamentals of biblical prophecy and proclaiming the soon return of Jesus. 